Hi, welcome to Life Wisdom with Ed Langan, the place to come for practical and spiritual information to help you as you move forward along your path and life wisdom from the guides. Life Wisdom stands for love, inspiration, faith, and empowerment. On this spiritual talk show, we talk about everything from the law of attraction and quantum physics to self-love and what your soul wants you to know. I'm your host, Ed Langan. I am a psychic channel for the Ascended Ones. I am a life coach, a law of attraction expert, an author, and a spiritual teacher. Other than that, <laughs> I'm just a, just a regular person, regular guy, whatever that might be. On this episode, we're going to talk about getting ready for the new year, getting your energy ready for 2020 and the new decade, what the energy is going to be doing, what um, a couple of things to help you with that, and kind of some of what to expect um, and how to be in alignment in the next decade. And I'm going to give you a hint. Creative focus is really, really important, and self-care is really, really important as we're moving forward. In the second part of the show, I'm going to channel the guides and answer questions um, for the people about, for, for, for the people, <laughs> for all you guys out there, for the viewers, about um, law of attraction and any aspect of your life that you'd like to ask about. You can post during the show in the live chat, or you can send me a question ahead of time. I do have some questions that were sent ahead of time this, this week, also this month. And remember, the more powerful and more focused the question, the more powerful and focused the answer from the guides. Good. I would like to thank everybody who is liking and sharing all of our shows and my show from Star Nations. We really appreciate it. You are making it easy for folks who are looking for this information, other seekers like yourself to find it. And all of us at Star Nations, thank you very much. We really appreciate that. Speaking of shows on um, Star Nations, I wanted to let you know that Polly Joe's show, Chakra Sessions, has a new time and a new day. So that is now on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. So you can actually watch that later tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So that is now on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. It's a great show. Um, I don't know if you know Polly Joe. If you don't, I suggest you check it out. Um, she is an amazing spiritual teacher. So that is Chakra Sessions with Polly Jo LeVay at Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Excellent. Hi, Nessie. How are you? Thank you for loving and sharing. I appreciate it. Um, I have some very, very exciting news that we're going to share at the end that has to do with Neshi and Polly Joe and Maureen and myself. And we are all really, really excited about it. So I'm looking forward to that. I see uh, Pauline Brown is here. Hi, Pauline. How are you? Hope all is well across the pond there. <laughs> um, so I have a very exciting announcement at the end, which we're going to talk about. And we're going to see who else is joining us live. And while we're waiting, I just want to remind everybody that once a month, um, we do a prayer and meditation for 10 minutes. And what we ask you to do is we ask wherever you are for the 10 minutes to focus your intention and meditate or pray, if you prefer, on peace, love, harmony, and healing. And our next one is going to be on Monday, January 27th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Excellent. Rob is here. Hey, Rob, how are you? Glad you're here. And that's when the next prayer and meditation is. Now, I have something interesting that, that's going to go along with what we're going to talk about here tonight um, or this afternoon anyway. And a friend of mine said, I really like what you guys are doing about the meditation, but I can't join you. The time is just doesn't work for me and my family. And I said to her, that is fine. I said, do you meditate in the morning? And she says, yes, I do. And I said, what you can do is you can hold the intention of sending that energy with our energy and connecting with it later, even though you're not doing it at the same time. The reason is, is as we're moving into the higher dimensions, fourth dimension, fifth dimension, 
time becomes very fluent and very flexible. So you can affect things in the past and add them to the future or do things in the future. And so I've heard of people actually sending Reiki healing back in time. So as you move into the higher dimension. So if you can't make it um, at that particular time, if you meditate on that day or a couple of days around that, you can hold the intention of having that energy join everybody else's and it will. So that's kind of a cool thing. Good. So hopefully you'll be able to join us. Um, what else do I need to tell you? I need to tell you that Star Nations magazine, the January issue, the first issue of the new decade and the new year will be out tomorrow. And there's a beautiful picture of it. I'm excited to read it. There's always great stories in there from um, some of the other TV hosts and some of the other folks who just write for the magazine. There's always some great things. Neshi always has some wonderful insights in her editorial comments. So if you can, uh, Check that out. That'll be good. I'm sure Neshi or Marge or somebody will put the link in the comments so that you guys can uh, can subscribe to it and check it out if you like. So excellent. Good. Perfect. I think we're good. I think we're ready. You guys ready to find out what's going to be going on this year and as the, the decade moves forward? I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> so What's been happening is, in a lot of my readings, this card, which Marge is going to put up on the screen here in a second, there it is, um, from my Ganesh deck, this card, Sustenance, has been coming up a lot. And, and more than just sort of, you know, this person gets it, maybe five people, I mean, like lots of people are getting it in a row. And it's got my attention and it's caused me to to uh, think about it. So sustenance on the surface, hi Angie, how are you? Um, appears to be about food. And it is about food, but it's it's about three parts. It's about mind, body, and spirit. So when we're talking about sustenance, we want to make sure that we're feeding all of those parts. And this is going to be really important as we're moving forward in the next decade. Now, hopefully most people are doing well with the body. We're understanding the foods that we're eating. We're understanding um, how it affects our body. People are feeling food much, much more. Marjorie and I have um, are both gluten free, so we understand about the different food. So you, hopefully the body part. There's a lot of really good nutritional coaches out there. There's a lot of really good nutritional information, so that you're putting good things into your body. The part of this that I want to focus on more is the mind and the spirit. Are you feeding your mind? Are you reading books? Are you hopefully watching lots of Star Nation shows and learning and growing that way? You want to make sure that you're feeding your mind. That's really, really important. And the most important part of this, as we're moving through time here into the new year and the new dec decade, is to make sure that you're feeding your spirit. This is about spirit. This is about this time, the new decade, and moving forward, we are going to move into the golden age very soon. Within a number of years, we're going to be in the golden age. And that is when it's really, really going to be about spirit. So it's really important that you're also taking care of your mind and your spirit. Hopefully you have a spiritual practice where you're doing some meditation and other things like that. If not, we would suggest that you look into that. Excellent. Good. All right. The energy this year and as we're moving forward and you're really going to start to feel it this year is compressing. Now, what does that mean? It means that the energy is moving faster and faster and faster. So maybe what used to take 12 hours now only takes eight hours. So the time is compressing as we're moving forward, as we're raising our vibration and as our raising our consciousness, time is compressing. So as time compresses, 
it becomes really, really important to focus your mind and to pay attention to your vibration. What's happening is, is we're moving more and more into the time of the goddess. What does that mean? The goddess is more female energy. It's about receiving. The male energy is about grinding, getting out there, action, into work, doing it like that, grinding it out, powering through it. And that type of energy isn't going to work as well anymore. And if everything that you're focused on is about doing and accomplishing and doing and accomplishing, and you're not paying attention to your vibration, you're going to spin. You're going to get into a beta loop and you're going to spin. Your energy is going to spin. We put so much focus on doing and on accomplishing things, which is not the energy of the goddess. Well, now, we're not saying that the goddess energy doesn't get things done, but they do it in a, it's done in a receiving fashion. It's done about the law of attraction. It's done from attraction. It's done from a vibrational place rather than from an action place. I agree about time moving faster in the blink of an eye. We moved from um, October into the new 2020. Yes, it is going very fast, Neshi, and it's going to continue to speed up. And as we move up into the fourth and fifth dimension, you're also going to notice that time is floaty. It's um, flexible. It's not as linear as we believe it is in the third dimension. So here's an example of that. Think about something that you did recently and you go, was that yesterday? Was that last week? Was it, you know, like, so um, to the point that Neshi was saying, I mean, October seems like it should have just been yesterday. And October is, you know, we're, we're past Halloween, we're past Thanksgiving, we're past Christmas, we're past New Year's, and we're just flying along. And Christmas to me already feels like a long time ago. So that's what's happening with the energy. It's going to continue to compress, which is a good thing because it's going to be about us focusing. If you're all about action and about doing, you're going to burn yourself out. You're going to get yourself because our energy is moving up <coughs> into the law of attraction, into vibration, which is a good thing. How do we know where we're vibrating? That's a really good question. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> whatever you're thinking about, whatever you're focused on, whatever you're giving your attention to is usually where your energy is. So if you're thinking about something that you're worried about, you're in the vibration of worry and you're attracting something that you don't want. So as you move through your day, ask yourself this question, where is my vibration? Another way to pay attention to how that feels is to ask, how do I feel? What's my mood? What's my attitude right now? Am I in a good mood? Am I worried? Am I concerned? That is letting you know what you're attracting in that particular moment. And you have the ability to change that if you don't get caught in a beta loop. If you get caught in a beta loop, then you're going to need to use your willpower to shift that. One of the best ways to um, shift that is to take a nap but we can't always take a nap at work. So you're going to have to use your focus to shift your energy and think about something else and understand what am I attracting? Okay. Nessie is saying that I admit there are days where I feel like I had two days in one. The morning is one day and the afternoon is another. Does anyone else feel like that? Yes. Marge and I feel like that all the time. Pauline Brown is also saying yes, that, you know, um, I did another Facebook Live this morning, and 
it seems like I did that days ago, and that was at 11 o'clock this morning. So we refer to this Thursday as show day because we do <laughs> we do two shows, and it feels like a long time ago to me, and it feels like that there's a lot. So we are we never like to use the word need, but what we're wanting to do is pay more attention to our vibration, pay more attention to our focus, pay more attention to what we're sending out there. Okay. Now I have a process that I'm going to share with you. That is not, not for me. I learned it from Abraham years and years ago. Abraham is channeled through Esther Hicks. So Abraham Hicks, um, 20 plus years ago, and it's called the placemat process. And I have been using it almost every day for the past really long time. And the reason why it's called the placemat um, process is because when Jerry and Esther first learned about it, they were in a restaurant and they used a placemat. And it goes like this. What you do is you take a piece of paper and you draw a line down the center. And on one side, you put what you're going to do. And on the other side, you put what the universe is going to do. And then you make your to-do list and you put only what you're realistically going to do on your side of the paper. And even my to-do list, which I think is realistic, is never realistic. There's always 15 or 20 things on there. <laughs> it doesn't happen, but I'm getting better at that. And on the universe's side, you turn over everything else. You ask the universe to take care of it. So if I know that I have to call my parents, I'll write on the universe's side, call mom and dad. If I know that I need to um, start writing my article for Star Nations, which I do need to do for next month, um, I've written that on the universe's side, start aligning that, that energy, take care of writing that article. Um, what else? Um, bring the car in for oil change. Um, uh, ask Marge about this, um, make time to visit with these people, anything like that, anything that you're not doing right now that you can take off your list and put on the universe's side is going to make it easier for you because the universe, your guides, the energy is going to start working on it ahead of time in your behalf. So I will write on my list, call my parents, and then I'll be driving home and the phone will ring, it'll be my parents. And then that way the time just works out perfectly. So that will help you with that, the placemat process. Um, that's a real good description of it there. But if you're interested in finding more about it, you can check out um, abrahamhicks.com. And it is from the book, Ask and It Is Given. And there's more information about that there. Okay, good. Um, Neshi is writing that uh, I love your Thursday show day. You offer two live streams. Yes, we do. And I, I actually love show day too. It's really fun. So it's good. And this morning we did um, about um, signs, which is going to be interesting because some of the questions that I have ahead of time are people asking about signs. So we're going to talk about that in a little while. Good. The next part of the helping for us as we're moving into this new energy, into this faster energy, into this more spiritual based, into this more goddess energy is to remember to be heart centered. This is our lower brain and this is our higher brain. And when we're in our heart and in our heart-centered place, that's when we're allowing all of our energy to flow. That's when we're connected. That's when we're moving forward easily. So how do you get heart-centered? Good question. I'm glad you asked. And it's not a hard thing to do. Anything that makes you smile, anything that makes you laugh is putting you in your heart center. So if you find yourself caught in a beta loop, grab your phone, turn on YouTube and look at pictures of babies or look at pictures of puppies or look at anything that or anything that's funny that makes you laugh. There's been some um, 
some really, really funny stuff from Saturday Night Live on videos lately, and I'm not going <laughs> to, they might not be appropriate for, uh, for here, so I'm not going to talk about them. But um, anything that makes you laugh, anything that makes you smile, puts you in your heart center. So um, as I'm looking at the comments, I see my sister is here. Hi, Ann. And uh, she, she wrote me too. And thinking that my sister is watching makes me happy. Puts me in my heart center. And Lisa Crawford is saying that she loves Abraham too. Yes, Marjorie and I absolutely love Abraham. We've been, uh, Abraham is part of the group that speaks through me. And we've been working with Abraham for well over 20 years. Good. Um, Rob likes the old Dean Martin celebrity roast. <laughs> yeah, those are fun too. Anything that makes you laugh, anything that brings you joy, puts you back into your heart center, which is actually your higher brain, not your lower brain. So being heart centered is going to be really, really important as we're moving forward, as the energy is shifting. Because think about it, if the energy is moving faster and is compressed, you're going to feel negative things much more than you would if the energy, <laughs> thank you, Neshi, if the energy um, was slower. On the other side of that, on the good side of that, if you're connected and flowing and in your heart, then that energy is also going to move even faster and manifestation is going to be easier. It's going to be easier for you to create and manifest the things that you are looking for, the things that you like. Good. I'm watching the comments and uh, <laughs> I will I will say this, that Neshi is saying a brother and sister who love each other. Thank you. And uh, I will also say this. The only one who ever gets away with calling me Eddie is my sister. Nobody calls me Eddie. I'm Ed. But <laughs> we're glad you're here, Anne. <laughs> Makes me smile, puts me in my heart. So it's all good. Excellent. The next part of this that we want to talk about is going to be a little surprising. And that is the world is perfectly broken. Perfectly broken. Ed, what are you talking about? Glad you asked. Everything seems to be going wrong. Everything. Education, the government, healthcare, insurance, finances, the climate, the fires, the war, the, the, the natural disasters, everything seems to be going wrong. Or it's an alarm clock to wake people up. The world is broken in such a way that we look at it and go, I don't even know how to begin to try to fix this. It makes you want to run and hide and be inside and be away. I have lots of friends who say, I don't want to be around people. I don't want to be around the world. I want to just go hide. And that is an invitation to go within. That is an invitation to connect with your spirit. The world is waking up. This is the time of the awakening. And for a lot of us, we've already awoken, but there's lots of people who need a bigger alarm to wake up. And that's what's happening. And it's asking us to go within. Because the only way to fix this, the only way to make all of this better is to go up is to raise our consciousness, is to raise our vibration, is to move up into the fourth and fifth dimension, which is what all of our spiritual work is, which is what all the, the teachers, all the show hosts, everybody at Star Nations, that's, that's what we do. We're helping everybody, including ourselves, raise our vibration. We're helping us awaken and move up. And the world out there, some are awake quicker than others. So there's a bigger alarm to get more people to wake up, to get more people to start paying attention. 
When you feel like there's no answers that you don't know, that's when people start asking spiritual questions. That's when start people start looking within. That's when people start asking about meditation and about angels and about guidance and about law of attraction and about all of those things. I'm sure all you guys know that because you're, you're already watching programs like this. But that's what's happening in the world. We're being asked to move up. And that is going to continue as we move forward in this decade. Now, this is really important to understand. The media is going to let you think that it's a whole lot worse than it actually is. Because there's, um, how do we say this? There's, there's um, profit in fear. That's a good way to say it. So to keep you afraid and to keep you from understanding what your power is and to keep you from moving up, there's profit in that. So there are people who are going to use that as manipulation to, to do that. The fact is that when you talk to Abraham and other spiritual teachers and other connected beings, they're telling you that this is the safest the planet has ever been. This is the time where more people are prospering than not, where things are actually working out, where things are actually going well, but we're not receiving that information. Is that a good thing, that we're not receiving that information? Well, everybody has to wake up. So anything that's causing our brothers and sisters to wake up is good. So the energy is going to keep moving faster. It's really important that we focus. It's really important that we're paying attention to where our vibration is. It's important that we're staying heart-centered and we're understanding that more and more of this is about us. And what a wonderful job you all do at Star Nations. Thank you. You've helped me in leaps and bounds, and I am extremely grateful. Well, Lisa, thank you so much. What a wonderful, lovely comment. And you, you're the reason why we do this. This, this. this is how we offer love. This is how we serve the world. This is how we help. And I know, I know Polly Joe. I know Maureen. I know Neshi. I know that they all feel the same way. So thank you. What a wonderful, beautiful comment. Thank you so much. Our work is to remember that we are the creator of our own reality. And when we create our own reality, we create our own world. The world that I create, the world that I see, people do the right thing because that's who they are. The world that I create, there's enough for everybody. The world that I create is a happy, joyful place. Now, that may not be what the world is experiencing right now, but I know that I create my own reality. And as I hold that focus and hold that vision from, from both my mind and my heart, eventually that will manifest in my experience. And as more and more of us hold that intention and hold that focus, that will also begin to manifest in the larger world also. I know lots of people who are doing that. I know lots of people who are holding that intention. That is part of why Marge and I do the meditation and prayer group once a month, to hold that intention, to send that energy out there. Good. Excellent. So use the placement process. Pay attention to where your energy is during the day. Where's my vibration? Where's my focus? You have the ability to shift and change that. Now, this is a little bit different than what we're used to focusing on. We're used to focusing on everything out here and not so much in here. And now we want you to pay more attention to what you're thinking, to where your focus is, to what mood you're in, and to work on shifting it if it's not where you want it to be. One of the things that comes up all the time, and you've some of you have heard me talk about it before, is how many emotions are there? And we know that there are 
two emotions. And people go, Ed, two, Ed, what are you talking about, two? And we say, there's all these over here, and there's all these flavors and degrees, but they all feel good. And there's all these over here, and there's all these flavors and all these degrees, but they all feel bad. Love and fear. Those are the only two emotions. Now, you want to know why there's only two emotions? That's for the men, because if there were more than two, we would freak out. We wouldn't be able to handle that. So <laughs> that's why there's only two, love and fear. And when you're in the energy of love, you're connected, you're in alignment with your soul, and you're allowing everything that you're asking for to flow easily through you, to easily manifest, to come through. When you're in fear, you're in resistance. You're not allowing your energy to flow. You're asking, which is a good thing, but you can't ask and receive at the same time because they're two different vibrations. So you need to move over to love to allow. So don't stay in fear. Don't live in fear. But a lot of people live in fear. So the question that comes up is, where is worry? Is worry in love or is worry in fear? And people say, some of them have... <laughs> Some of them say that um, love, that worry is in love. We have taught women that if you love somebody, you have to worry about them, and you can't. It's impossible. Worry is always in fear. And when you're worrying, you're doing a few different things. You're making yourself a victim, and you're not allowing your energy to flow, and you're using your creative focus and your energy to create something that you don't want. So worry isn't going to work. Worry is a slow, dense, heavy vibration, whereas the positive vibrations are a much quicker, faster vibration, which are going to line up with the quicker energy and manifest quicker. But if you continually focus on worry, you're eventually going to manifest things that you don't want. Excellent. Good. Um, Neshi also thanked Lisa for her wonderful comment. There we go. Lisa, thank you. I appreciate you sharing with us your experience and how Star Nation has assisted you in your spiritual growth. We are truly here for our community. And yes, I absolutely agree with that. Thank you, Neshi. And um, Lori is saying that... Uh, I changed my <laughs> changed my shirt since yeah yes I had a, a lighter pink shirt on this morning <laughs> and Sandy is here hello Sandy welcome we're glad you're here good so I think we're uh, I think we're good here I think you understand the energy is moving faster it's really important that you focus and that you pay attention to what energy you're putting out there. You're paying attention to what you're thinking about. And if we focus only on doing and accomplishing things, if we think that that's where our worth comes from, that that's going to be more and more challenging as we move forward in the decade. And our accomplishments, the things that we're creating and allowing, it's going to be more about receiving and more about focusing as the energy is faster. Good. Excellent. All right. So it's a little bit early, but that's all right. We're going to, uh, I do have some questions from, from ahead of time. So I'm going to uh, bring in the guides. Here are some guidelines about the guides. The guides can be very direct and sometimes blunt. It always comes from a place of love. The more focused and the more powerful the question, the more powerful the answer from the guides. Sometimes my voice changes, as you heard earlier, they were already trying to, to jump in. You always have free will. They're not gonna take away your free will. The guides will give you what you need, but not necessarily what you want. And as I said, we do have some, some questions that were sent in ahead of time. So I'm gonna start with those. If you do have questions, um, that would be, uh, you know, you can put them in there and Marge will get them up. And Madonna is saying, hello, hello, Madonna, how are you? Glad you're here. Thank you. So our first question is from our friend Ellen. Should I say I love you to my sweetie, even though he can't say it back? 
do I need to speak my truth if I take off my wedding, my wedding ring? I want to be impeccable with my word. So thank you, Ellen. It's a wonderful question. Just give me a second and we'll answer that for you. We would say, I love you, even though he may not be able to receive this. Think about how you take a compliment. When someone says to you, oh, that's a pretty whatever you're wearing, you oh, this whole thing, you didn't receive that compliment, you let it bounce off of you. So when you say, I love you to him, see how he receives it. See if some part of him receives it. See if some part of him appreciates that and allows it in, or if it completely bounces off and defects and deflects. Now, we would not not say it because he doesn't receive it, because it's your truth, it's how you feel, and we never, ever want anybody stuffing down their feelings or denying how they feel. The thing that gets tricky for you is you are looking for a response. So you're not saying it simply as your truth. You're not saying it as your truth. You're saying it and looking for validation in response, which is understandable. When you tell somebody you love them, you would hope that they would say back, well, I love you too. And if they don't, that can be disconcerting. So we understand that. We want you to um, take some of the, um, the deeper meaning of it out and some of the looking for validation out and speak it as if you would say to somebody, um, it's a beautiful day outside or something to that effect, something without as much emotional baggage on it and see how he responds from there. But if you're, if you're saying it from the point of, I'm looking for this sort of response from you, and if I don't get it, I'm going to be disappointed, that energy is also felt in the sending of the question. So there is an energy form to how you're saying the question. If you're saying, I love you as just a generous, honest thing, then that's one thing. But if you're saying, I love you with strings attached, that's certainly an energy that he can feel and he is going to respond either way, depending on how the question is. As far as taking your ring off, we would do what makes you feel the most comfortable. Now, we know since the passing of your husband that, that you've kept your ring on and, and that really feels important to you. And we have suggested that maybe you wear it around your neck so at least it's not on your finger, but it still feels close to you. Um, so we would do whatever feels best for you and whatever makes you feel the most comfortable. That is not, the ring is not the big issue with Joe saying back to you, I love you. It's more what we said earlier about the energy behind the question and what you're looking for in the response, okay? The other thing that we want to say to you and we want you to be um, uh, aware of is we don't like the word impeccable, not for the reason that you think. The reason why we don't like the word impeccable is because it sounds to us like forceful. It sounds to us like in a box. It sounds to us like stuck. It sounds to us like in a, I'm impeccable. And that is, we're not, we're not crazy about that energy. We like the word honest. We like the word real. We like the word sincere. We like the word open hearted. We like that. So can you feel, can everybody who's listening, can you feel the difference in the energy in that? So as you're moving through your day, one of the things where you can check in to see how you're vibrating, where your energy is, where your vibration is, is by what you're saying and how you're saying it, because that always gives you an idea where your energy is. So this also ties in to what we were talking about earlier that helps you pay attention to where your vibration is. So 
Very good. There you go, Ellen. Thank you for your question. We appreciate it. The next question is from Mark. Could you ask the guides what signs I should be looking for to know that I am on the right path? And this is, <laughs> we love this because this morning's Facebook live show was about signs and looking for signs and getting signs. And we specifically spoke about the angel numbers, which are the, the repeating numbers, 111, 222, et cetera. And law of attraction, there's our law of attraction story of the day. The, the earlier show was about signs. And then Mark is also asking a question about signs. So there's a couple of things that we want to clear up here for you, Mark, to help you understand this, okay? Um, signs can be anything. The way you notice the sign is the way it feels to you. When something catches your attention, when something is odd, when something is, is, is out of place. I know some friends who are very much um, connected with the angels and they'll go someplace where there's no reason for there to be a feather and they'll see a feather. Or they'll, um, so for example, they'll, they'll, um, They'll sit down uh, for lunch and they'll lift their napkin and there'll be a feather underneath their napkin and they don't have chickens or birds in their house. So <laughs> stuff like that. So if you start looking for things like that, you will notice the signs and you will notice by the way they feel. As you start to pay attention to them, you'll see them more. Now, one of the key things here is you have to ask for signs. Earlier, we talked about the book by Abraham from Jerry and Esther Hicks, Ask and It Is Given. That is a big key to everything here you have to ask. So if you ask to see signs, you will see signs and you will know what they are and you will understand them. Now, the second part of your question that we really want to answer, we really want to talk about here that we're excited about is the fact that you can never be off your path. We get people asking us at times, I'm off my path, something's wrong, how do I get back on my path? And we laugh a little bit, not at them, with them, and say, you can't be off your path. And they say, oh, I have to be off my path. I would never have chosen this. And we say, well, sometimes your path is a wonderful walk on the beach. And sometimes your path is an easy jog down the street. And other times your path is up an inhill, uh, 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 an incline. Other times it's a sheer cliff face. Other times it's walking through briar patches and dense bush because all of that is part of your path. Now, we want to explain something here to you. This is where we want to get, and this is where we want to be. And we believe that the see if I can do this here, that the easiest way to do this is to go from here to here because our human mind says that's the best way to go. Now, our soul takes us right into this, which is what we do not want to do to get to that. And this is where there's contrast, there's, um, there's stress, there's stuff, there's things, but this is actually the fastest way to that. And that's why our soul and our inner being takes us into that. And when that happens, what comes up is, oh, I must be off my path. And you're not. It's all part of your path. So, good. We want to give you a couple of mantras that, that oh, and, and speaking of times, it's 444 right now. So there's, there's the angel time <laughs> while we're talking about signs. We want to give you a couple mantras that will help Mark and will help everybody. And that is this, everything is always working out for me, even when it seems like it's not. So if you get into a part where you're going through briar patches or whatever, understand that that is still part of the working out for you. And that's still the fastest and best way to get to where you want to go. Okay. And then the next part of the mantra is I am always right on track. So everything is always working out for me, even when it seems like it's not, and I am always right on track. Excellent. I have one more question from um, 
that was sent in ahead of time. And then I see there's some questions. There's a question from Rob. There's a question from Lori. There's a question from Christine. So I will get to you guys in a minute. Hang tight. Cool. All right. From Lynn, could I ask your guides as well? If a situation I am looking for closure is about to happen, and if the signs I received this morning from who were from who I think they were. So yes, the first part is absolutely yes. The the signs that you received this morning were from who you think they were. Um, and yes, they were. Um, you know that. As far as the closure on the situation, if it's coming to the end, yes, we do feel the energy finishing. We do feel a, a, a finishing. We feel a movement. We feel a, a closure of that and an ending coming. Um, fairly quickly uh we're 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 um we're not getting a really clear timeline but yes it does feel like that 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 the energy is in the completion phase and that it is going to be completed very soon so excellent thank you lynn we appreciate your uh, your question okay here's a question from susan and can you give me some guidance in dealing with the many things i have on my plate these days also how does 2020 look for me? Well, thank you, Susan. I um, appreciate that. The um, the answer for you is, did you hear about the placemat process that we had talked about a little bit earlier in the show? The placemat process is from Abraham Hicks, from Jerry and Esther Hicks. It's in the book, Ask and It Is Given. Um, you can also go to their website and find that, or you can listen back to this show and use the placemat, and that will help you. The thing that this is a great question, and this is what we've been talking about this entire show. As we move forward in 2020 and into this decade and beyond, it's becoming more and more about energy and more and more about focus and more and more about being heart centered and open. So the things that you do from action are not going to be as effective as the things that you do from inspired action, from heart centered action, from aligned action. That's going to make the difference. So that's what's coming for you. Um, we do feel that, yes, you're going to have a very good 2020. There are some things that are going to appear to challenge you, as it is for most people. Remember that fear is designed to control and do what you can to shift from the fear and to get back on track. Remember the mantra that we gave to Mark a couple minutes ago is, I am, and everything is always working out for me, even when it seems like it's not and I am always right on track. What happens is, is with our human mind, something begins to happen and we decide this is bad, this can't, so this isn't part of the working out, so this isn't right, when if you would just relax and let it be, you will see that it is indeed part of the working out. So thank you, Susan, we appreciate your question. Excellent, good. Pauline, very good. I left a question. I'm not sure if it was too late. My question is, I have done a lot of work on myself, but nothing seems to be changing. Any advice, please? Um, Pauline, thank you for your wonderful question, and thank you for, for being here. We always appreciate when you are here. Um, there is a point which there's a bunch of different names for it, but the point is the tipping point where all of a sudden everything tips and everything shifts and then the momentum really starts to move and really starts to change. We appreciate, your guides appreciate how much work you've been doing and we want you to appreciate yourself. We want you to relax a little bit and understand that the tipping point is very, very close, but the tipping point in your mind is a relegation of time. When is the time going to happen? When is the, and when we make it a, a relegate it to time where we're sort of asking again, we're sort of getting out of connected and we're getting back into the asking part and that slows it down. So the, quickest ways to allow things to manifest is to trust that they're going to manifest and let them manifest in their own time, but is to spend more time in your heart, more heart-centered energy, which is anything that makes you laugh, anything that makes you smile, put on your favorite music, dance, play with your kids, um, 
Look at funny videos on YouTube or whatever. Anything that makes you smile, that causes the energy to flow. Because you're, when your point of focus is in joy and in connected, that's allowing your energy to flow. So one of the things that we talk to people is they say, well, I want this, but I don't know how to feel good about that. Our answer to them is always feel good about anything and that will allow everything to flow. So you are on track. The tipping point is soon, but the more you focus on where's the tipping point, that slows it down. Excellent. Wonderful question, Pauline. Thank you. Rob has a question. Um, big Saturn Pluto is conjunct on Sunday. This is foreshadowed such events as the Protestant Reformation, World War I, the Cold War, etc. I have noticed today that this is in close and hard aspect to my nodes. Um, what is the karmic lesson? Okay. The karmic lesson is still about focusing your attention and connecting. The karmic lesson is still about being in your heart and still about being joy and allowing your energy to flow. The, the thing that is true on the smaller scale is also true on the bigger scale, that the things that appear to be terrible cause the greatest asking cause the greatest focus, cause the greatest eventual allowing. It's the contrast that causes us to ask. If everything was peachy keen all the time, no one would ever get anything done because no one would experience contrast, which causes them to focus, which causes them to ask. Now, when the contrast happens on a bigger global scale where more people are involved and there is, there is larger pain, larger discomfort, it causes a much bigger, stronger, more powerful focus. But then it's up to each person within that to open their hearts and to allow the answer to flow and to allow the energy to flow. We would be cautious about how we're interacting with um, things like Mercury retrogr retrograde, with the planets aligning with that, because people tend to not give their power away to smaller things, but then they say, well, Ed's guides, it's, it's the whole planet, the whole planet. And, you know, Mercury is retrograde, it's a whole planet. Well, Mercury retrograde happens almost six months a year. So during those six months of the year, you're going to hide under your bed? You can't. So be careful about how you're giving your power away to some of that. Now, be aware of it and say, okay, some of my electronic things might not work as well during this time, but I'm going to be okay about it. I'm going to laugh about it. I'm going to stay connected and I'm going to stay in my heart and allow that to flow that way. Any physical things that you're feeling in your body is about your energy flow and how you're allowing your energy to flow through your body, and it's not anything outside of you asserting into your experience. So good. Hopefully that answers your question. This eye is a little itchy here. Good. Lori. Hi, Lori. How are you? I'm planning to, to do a releasing ceremony tomorrow night to release what no longer serves me my highest and best. Do you have any recommendation stations that would include to include the ceremony the process, I am planning to ask whatever is to be removed and to be replaced with highest and best. Yes, that's that's what we would do. Is um, the best prayer there is is thank you. The second best prayer is let this be highest and best, whatever that is. So as you're releasing and as you're allowing these things to go and as you're doing your ceremony, simply ask for what is highest and best. Simply ask for guidance, ask for help. Now, we know you do that already and we know you work with your guides and, and, and you do all that and you're very, very good at that. You simply ask for what's highest and best 
and go from there. The the thing that we find with with people, and we understand this because you're 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 living this experience, you're having this experience, is you're deciding that this is bad and this is good. And when you decide that something is bad, you immediately run the energy of it being bad. And when you decide that something is good, you immediately run the energy of it being good. Now, we understand that we can't always land on this as good. There are some things that could be bad. So what we would like you to do is land on I don't know. Land on let it be neutral and let that sort of open up. We feel from you that... that. Um, you you've decided that some things are bad and sometimes the things that appear to be the worst for us in the long run turn out to be the best for us we and now we're not this is not a reflection on 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 you but we know people who say that getting cancer is the best thing that ever happened to me so be aware of that release the things that you feel are hindering that are bothering you and ask them be, to be replaced with highest and best and work on, as you're moving forward from your ceremony on, work on being more in your heart and more allowing. Excellent. Thank you. Wonderful question. Hi, Christina. Hi, Ed. There is, uh, if there's time, I would love some advice regarding the puzzle pieces I'm collecting towards my spiritual process. They seem disjointed. So it's hard for me to see a pattern and know where to direct my energy. Okay, wonderful question, Christina. Um, thank you. We're interesting creatures as humans because we want to know the how. We want to know the path. We want to see where we're going. Yet, if you talk to some of your spiritual friends, they will tell you that they are surprised at some of the things they do. So if you ask Ed, if you asked him that when, when he was 20 years old, if at this time now he ever thought that he would be doing this, he would tell you you were nuts. So the, you are on track. You are on your path. It is going to all fit in and fit together. The... The question is a little bit more of your human mind and a little bit more of you're trying to see it and you're trying to understand where your path is and you're trying to piece it together. So once again, we're going to go back to the mantra that we shared with Mark for, for all of you guys. Everything is always working out for me, even when it seems like it's not. Now, you're not experiencing a lot of that, but the second part of that is I am right on track. So continue to allow that, continue to do your work and understand that there will be a culmination, a coming together, and you will understand all the parts. But there is some faith and some trust within this that will help you with that. You are right on track. You are right on your path. And we feel for you within a short amount of time with the, with the within the first half of the year before the the um, the event in May that we're going to announce in a couple of minutes, you will really know where you are. Your path will come together, and you will start getting the the, the puzzle pieces, as it were, to flow. Once again, we're saying get into your heart, allow yourself to be happy, and relax about it, and that will move the energy even faster. Excellent, wonderful question. Thank you so much. Okay, Lisa Crawford, what does my 2020 look like, please, and thank you. Cool picture you got there, by the way, Lisa. I don't know if that's Stonehenge or whatever. I just saw it quick, but that, that's, that's cool, whatever that is. Um, it's going to start off with a bang. It's going to be the the first quarter here. We feel is there's there's going to be um, there's going to be some 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 movement, some bigger things. It's going to start off with a bang. Um, it is going to be a good year for you. Um, there are times where um, you are going to have some challenges with what we talked about today, where you're going to um, sort of get into your lower mind. You're going to struggle. You're going to spin a bit. So remember to. Um, 
to heart center, remember to shift your energy, remember to pay attention to what you're focusing on. There is, you have all of you, everybody who is watching, everybody who is listening, you have much, much more control over all of this than you realize. You create your own reality. And as we're moving forward in this decade, it's going to be more and more about understanding your vibration, more and more about understanding what the energy is that you're putting out, and you will match that and then experience that. And as you do that, as you're heart-centered, as you're open, as you're joyful, and as you're happy, that will be what's coming for you in this year and the years moving forward. And we do see you having a, a good year in 2020. And as we said, we see it starting off with a bang in the first quarter here. So from here till March, from here till April. So good, excellent, thank you. Thank you for your question. Angie is asking, how can I balance my energy? That is a very good question. And do you meditate? Meditation is a really, really good way to balance your energy and to help start balancing your energy. At the beginning of the show, we talked about the three things, the, the card with the sustenance, the body, mind, and spirit. And balance is no longer just about balancing spirit. It's also about balancing body, and it's also about balancing mind. So there is some of all of that. There are um, wonderful programs uh, apps and things like that that you can get that help with your brain, putting you in the alpha brain wave, putting you in a theta brain wave, putting you in a, uh, a, a beta for focus. So we would look into those. We would look into those. Are you grounding? Are you getting outside and putting your feet on the earth, on the barefoot on the dirt? Are you doing those things? And if you are, then we want you to relax about that and understand that things will fall more into balance and you will find yourself more in balance. So excellent. Thank you very much. We really appreciate that. We appreciate everybody's questions and um, we're, we're a little bit late. So we're going to wrap it up here. Um, I already mentioned the meditation and that if you can't make the meditation, you can hold your intention to send your energy with our energy when we send it out because time is fluid. So you can do that. And here we go. The big news, the exciting news, what we're really, really excited about is Star Nations is going to do a deep dive manifestation weekend with the power of four. Cool. What does that mean? That means that Polly Joe LeBay, Maureen Mann, Neshi Lokats and myself are going to do a Star Nations weekend where we are going to really dive in deeply about how to manifest. And we're going to come at it from each of our own specialties. So I am going to speak about it from the law of attraction perspective. Maureen Mann is going to speak about it from the angel perspective. Polly Joe is going to speak about it from the dimensional perspective and from the chakra perspective and from that energy. And Neshi is going to talk about it from bringing ancient wisdom forward to current knowledge and from the Native American point of view. We are so excited about this. This is going to happen the last weekend in May here in um, New England. So with all that information will be out there for you. The other really cool thing is that it's going to include is we are going to have four online classes first. So there'll be an online class with each one of the teachers and then the live weekend. So you'll have an opportunity to do that. We are very, very excited about this. This is going to be so much fun. <laughs> It's really, really cool. So the details will be coming. Um, we just recently worked this out and figured it out and got a time and, and everything else. If you don't know who Polly Joe LeBay is, who Maureen Mann is, who Neshi Lokotz is, Neshi Lokotz is the founder of Star Nations, by the way. Um, my last three guests on my last three show were Polly Joe, Neshi, and Maureen. So you can find that information on Star Nation's YouTube page. You can find that the, the rebroadcast of the shows, or you can find that on my 
um, all of my Facebook pages. If you dig through, you'll find the the uh, the videos, and you can watch back. We are really, really excited about it. We can't wait. It's <laughs> it's going to be absolutely amazing, and we hope that uh, lots of you will join us. And uh, for those of you who know the joke, you'll get to see Marge in person. <laughs> anyway, um, that's what's going on. If you live in uh, the New England area, we are doing lots of workshops within New England. We're going to be at uh, Polly Joe's um, school this weekend. So you can you can check out my website for that. Um, my email is there if you want to contact me. And uh, I think we're good. Thank you all for watching. We really appreciate it. All of us at Star Nations, Marge and I really appreciate it. Um, and Pauline, um, I know you're in the UK and this is the beginning and maybe within a couple of years, we will be able to get to the UK and see you over there and get across the pond. That would be really fun. So hopefully we can do that. Um, thank you to Marge. She did a wonderful job uh, flying the plane as it were, taking care of the show. Thank you for all of you. Thank you to the guides. And the guides want you to know that you are worthy. Light and love guys, we'll see you next month. Take care, bye.